Welcome Mattes back again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the fall training, the training we do before the season actually. In the beginning you work very much with the discipline, not focus too much on the physical part of the training. You must find the routines. Routines for the dogs and routines for yourself. If you have done your homework then later in the season the work with the dogs just floating. If you haven't done your homework, then later in the season you still have dogs that are biting on the rope, that are crazy and so on. Now I will take 12 dogs and I have some crazy guys in this group uh, that really want to start. They have been resting for a couple of days now, a little bit too much actually. And I haven't been stressed of that because I wanted to do this video. So the first start you will see now is a start that usually is not common for us. I think that the dog will be a little bit more eager um, and just to show you I will not tell them to calm down. I will just show you how a start could be if I don't tell them to calm down. I will do this start two or three times over. I do a short loop four kilometer coming back to the kennel, turn the team put them into the team again, do another loop, and then you will see how do the dog act the first start, how do they act the second start. This is a super good way if you want to see how calm dogs you could have if you work with them. Do this over and over again. But now the dogs. This is also important because now we have 50 dogs here and they have seen that I've come down with a harness and I don't want them to standing screaming outside the dog in the kennels. So I want them to calm down a little bit. And of course it will be happy screaming dogs now when I start taking them out. But if you can have them calm already before you take them out of the kennel, that help you a lot with the stress level in the start of course. Right now everything has been quite calm, quite relaxed and the dogs are happy to do this. Femlan, happy! Delfina, happy! They are a little bit happy at least to go out running. And now the critical part will start when I'm putting the dogs into the team. And then it's also critical when I open the gate. Because at the moment when I open the gate, they know it's time to take off. I could hook them into the team, open the gate, close the gate, take them out of the team. Put them back in the team, open the gate, close the gate, take them out of the team. If you do that several times, they will also relax because you take off the... cut off the edge or something like that. Um, yeah, we'll see. Now I'm going to open the gate 
This is Gandalf. Really crazy guy. So that was tour number one and what I will do now is unhook all the dogs, they have a chance to drink water, turn the quad and go out again. They will be very confused because usually we don't do that, usually we come home after the tour and then it's over. So we will see. already now see the difference. The tour we have done now is four and a half kilometers so it's absolutely not the long distance. They are used to go longer and that's not the thing. Now they get so relaxed because it's a second start. I can really recommend you to do this. Now we see when I open the gate what's happening. And even Gandalf seems to be So I think you got the idea what I wanted to show you that actually if you do things over and over again that they don't expect you to do they get more tied in the brain than actually tied in the body. So this is the way you should continue working and working and working if you want to calm down your team. If you have a super crazy team do several start. Don't hesitate to do it all over and over and over and again. 
do it during a whole weekend. Start after start after start. Take a cup of coffee, continue do it over and over. And if you run them just one kilometer, you can do 10 starts in a day if you want. But that's how much you want to get control of your team and how much you want to be a driver on your team. When you have calm dogs, then you can take next level. Then you can go to difficult situations. Then you can go to places where you have other dogs because you know you can stop them. You can go to the dogs, you can talk with them. You can solve the problem, you can continue. If you have two crazy dogs, you can't do that. Then you are just a passenger on the sled and the dogs driving the team. And that's not how I want to, to driving my dog team. Next step in this video is that we going out uh, on the coffee trip tomorrow. Now it's another part of the training to get calm dogs. I will take a new team today out and they will of course also be a little bit crazy in the beginning. But then I going out and stop for coffee and make them relaxing and get used to stop on the trail. And probably they're not super used with that already, this part of the season. But later on, if you continue to practice that, they will be more and more relaxed. So now I will put this in front of the team and uh, here I stop for a while and probably I will make a cup of tea and the dog had to calm down and a good way to show them that it's time for a stop is to make a fire. So what I'm doing is that I'm hooking the anchor in the gang line and then I take this and tighten it and I need to put it out here into the ground <coughs> you see a lot of mushers who put the hook into the collar of the dog and I don't think that's fair to the leader dog
So what I try to say actually with this video is that if you want to get calm dogs, if you want to get a dog team that you can drive and you should be driver, not the passenger, then you had to practice a lot and you had to get give the dog a chance to be used with all these things. So the first thing I made was to do the start over and over again and they should never know if they're going to start or if they're going to wait or whatever. Everything should be like now. They, they actually don't know if we're going to sleep here tonight. <laughs> and that's good because then they're living on the trail. Um, that's important for me too that I'm living on the trail. I'm not staying home and uh, going out and then coming back home. Um, the goal is not to come back home. The journey on the trail is actually the goal. And that will be the same for, for the dogs. And then they relax here as much as they could relax in, in the kennel. And the reason why I started with dogs was not to uh, have a bunch of dogs back in the kennel. The reason why I started with the dogs was because I wanted um, a dog that follow me in the outdoor life when I was out in the mountains or forest. So why should I quit doing that? I should co actually continue doing that like, like this being out here if you like what if you like our videos please ah, you know what to do so i don't tell you that today this was a kind of instruction video and or showing behind the scene how it's it's to work with the sled dogs and uh, i think that was all from me today so see you next time ciao <laughs>